This is a Learning Commons instructional video. This is a video of a workshop that was held on the Gantt Project software. Before watching the Gantt Project workshop, you will need to download the appropriate software. Start by launching a web browser and going to the website www.gantproject.biz slash download. Then you can either click on the Gantt Project 2.5.5 or you can click on executable. This will bring you to a new window. You can click on the Gantt project executable file. And then you just need to click on it again to download the file. Select run. Once it is finished downloading, the installer will automatically start. Just select Next. Now you can read through the agreement and select I agree or disagree. If you agree, you can move on and then you click Next. Now you just have to click Install. Once the program is installed, you can click Close and then you can exit out of your web browser. Now you can just go back to your desktop and you can find the Gantt project icon, double click and launch the program. Now you can go ahead and continue watching the Gantt project workshop. Open folder. <laughs> so when you open Gantt project, this is what the interface of that software looks like. And you can see it looks quite a bit like a um, a Windows program with menus at the top of the screen, then some shortcut toolbar items, and then two tabs here, a Gantt tab and a Resources Chart tab. And you can add a third tab there if you click on the View menu, you can add a PERT chart tab. And these terms will make more sense to you when you take your project course. You'll learn what a Gantt chart is and what a PERT chart is. I won't go into that tonight, but um, notice how when you click on each of these tabs, the items uh, the shortcut toolbar items change and the look of the interface changes. Um, there are two main views here on your screen. The left view gives details of your project and over here the right view gives a calendar view of your project. And as we add information to your project, you'll see information in both of these areas regarding your project. So this software is just going to help you manage and view details of your project. Um, you can navigate these details in two different ways. You can use buttons here. Um, there's a on your. Um, you can use if you click and hold your left mouse, your left clicker. You can drag this calendar. And you can use these buttons up here, the previous and next, to also move through your calendar. So keep that in mind. Um, we're going to be inserting dates here for 
information about your project in a little bit. When you want to begin adding information about a project, um, you're going to go up to the far left corner and click on the project menu. And then click on new for a new project. And this will open up a box, create new project, where you can type in the name of your project. So let's say I'm working on a project for my company um, where I am um, starting up use of a new new software utilization program. My company is going to be using a new software. So I need to get that software purchased and installed on our computers. I need to get all of our staff trained on using that software. So I'm going to call that new project, New Software Utilization Program. I'm going to type in the name of my organization or company. Let's just say Allison's Company. And then if my company has a web site or a web address, I can type that in here. And I do just happen to have my own web site. Um, I bought my own web domain and I have my um, electronic portfolio located there, so I'll, I'll link it to this website. If I want to type in any description about this project, I can do that here. whatever those details are. I can then click on the next button and I can select my project domain um, to choose roles and later I'm going to show you how to add resources. Um, who are the people who will be working on this project? We'll talk about that a little bit. And Gantt Project already has a default role setting selected um, with a project manager role and then some undefined roles or I can select a software development project with the roles that you see here a developer, a document writer, a tester, a graphic designer, a document translator, packager, analysis, web designer, and a role, no specific role. Um, so I can select either of those as my role sets. And that will make a little more sense here in a few moments. Right now, I'm just going to leave it at default. Yes, how question. Did you, how did you get to this tab? Um, I clicked from Create New Project. I clicked down at the bottom on the Next button. She's in settings somehow. Yes, I was up at project, and then I clicked on new. Does that help, Anastasia? Not yet. <laughs> she had it on the right thing, and also, and she got a different. She got a settings screen somehow. Okay. This is. There you go. Now hit next right down okay. there. Okay. 
Oh, I see. And I must admit, this software will take a little time to get used to. Um, I really recommend playing around with it. Just as I was learning it, I played around with it. Things like um, I made up a project of myself organizing my closet and steps um, for doing that, or um, creating a new, I'm a scrapbooker, so steps of creating a new scrapbook, fun things like that. Um, I highly recommend just kind of playing around with this program for fun, using a little mini project as an example, just to get used to the interface of this, and then it'll become more familiar to you. So right now we're just getting some details in of this project. Did you click on this next one, Default Roles? Mm -hmm. And that'll be handy in a little bit here. I'll show you why. Um, click again on the Next button. And here we get to select a holiday calendar. And this is important because it will help you schedule work days of your project. Are you going to have your staff working um, holidays or not? Well, if we select the United States holiday calendar, that will automatically mark off as holidays days that most companies give to their employees as holidays, like Christmas Day, um, Labor Day, Fourth of July, days like that will automatically appear on your calendar as holidays. So I will select the United States holidays. Um, if you're working with another country, you could select that country's holiday calendar. Or if you don't intend to give your staff any specific holidays off, you could select none. And then you can manually go in and select days that you're not going to have your project running. But let's select United States. And then you can even choose weekend days for your company. I'm going to keep the traditional Saturday, Sunday weekend, but I could deselect those. If I'm going to keep my people working even on weekends, I could deselect those. Um, but I'll keep those checked. I'll give my company holiday, or I'm sorry, weekends off. And down here on weekends, no tasks can run. I'll keep that selected. So my company gets weekends off. But I could select all tasks run on other days. If my company ran seven days a week um, and I wanted my calendar to display that, I could select that. But I'm going to give my company weekends off. Is that pretty clear? Yes. So this is just to create my calendar for me and my project. And then I'll cl click on OK. And this has now set up some of the settings for this project. It's given my project a name. It started the calendar settings for my project. I'm going to do one more thing. Um, I'm going to click back on that left upper project menu and I'll select properties. And here I can select a few more settings for my project. Right away I can see my company's, I'm sorry, my project name comes up. My company's name comes up. If I gave a web page link, that comes up. If I give a description, if I gave a description earlier for the project, that appears. I can click again into, go into the calendar by clicking on the word calendar here under settings. And now I see that earlier I selected the holiday calendar for the United States. 
that I chose as my weekend days off, Saturday and Sunday, and that on weekends, no tasks run. Now I want to select a start date for my project. What day do I want my project to begin? And you can see today's date has been selected. But let's say my project really isn't going to start until next Monday. Right now I'm kind of just setting this up in the software. Um, I can click over here to the right, Show Calendar, and I can select a different start date for my calendar. Start date. I'm going to click on September 17th, 2012, as the actual start date of this project, when my company is going to begin this project. And I'm going to, down here, move tasks starting on September 11th and reschedule the remaining. Well, I haven't really created any tasks yet. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But I'm going to click on that button anyway, even though I haven't created any tasks yet. I want all tasks starting on September 11th. I actually want those to start on September 17th, so I'll click on that. So now I'll click on that OK button. Oh, I didn't mean for that. Let's go back into Project in the upper left. I want to do one more thing in Properties. I want to click into this Resource Roles. Um, here you want to think about the people who are working on this project. What roles will those people have, those resources. We're going to add some of those resources in right now. Um, so usually there is a project manager. When you have a project. Maybe your project also has an accountant. Let's click into that type new role here. Accountant. Then press the enter key. So we're going to type in all of the roles of our the resource people who will be working on this. Um, since my project is involves software, I'm going to have an information technology specialist. Let's say I also have a staff writer working on this project, and so on and so on. I can add all of the <coughs> titles or the roles of the people who will be working on this project in here. Okie doke, is that pretty clear? Why? Yes, okay, great. And later we're going to actually add names of the people working on the project. But here we're just adding their titles or the roles of the people. So now we've got this information added. We'll click OK. Um, let me show you, we've entered, we've spent some time now entering information about our project. Let's save this project so that we don't lose our work. Click again on that menu item project in the upper left, and then scroll down to Save As. And 
will um, select a name for this project or for this file. Um, I'm going to call this new software project. And up here in the save in, um, you will determine where you want to save this document. Do you want to save it to your desktop? Do you want to save it to um, a flash drive? Do you want to save it here if you're on a WITC campus? Do you want to save it to your H drive, your own specific drive on the um, network here? Can we find it? Um, so you can determine where you want to save that document. And down at Files of Type, but can we find ours? you're going to select Gantt Project Files .xml. And then you'll click on Save to save this project. I'll just put it to my desktop because my initials are on it, so you'll need. So it's important that, you know, you save your work frequently. And then when you go to send this document to your instructor, um, that's the document that you'll look for to upload it or send it as a link. I'm sorry, send it as an attachment to your instructor. So let's continue on working on this project and get some tasks on this document. Um, and this is what you'll see now listed here on the interface of your screen. First, though, let's add some resources, some names of people that will work on this project. Um, and there are several ways you can do that. One way is to go up here to the resources menu item at the top of the screen and click on new resource. And there by, on the box by name, you can add the name of the person. And I'm going to add my own name. You can add the phone number of that person. And it's good to get these contact, this contact information in here now so that you have it later when you're looking for this person. Here, mail, you can enter a street address or a email address, whatever you'd like. You got the same phone number as information. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> now look at this. Down here in in my the role information, because we already added those roles earlier, I can just click on this drop down arrow. Oh, I see project manager is in there twice. But isn't that cool? Now I can just select the role of this individual. So that's nice. So let's say I'm project manager. Um, on the next tab, days off, here I can add down here in the notes area the days off of this person. But up here in the start date, I can actually click on this calendar and click on the date that this resource person is going to start working on the project. So although my project start date is the 17th, let's say I as project manager won't actually come into work and start working until the 19th. I can say that here. And I can even say I'm only on this job through, let's say, November 12th. Those are the dates I've been hired to work on this project. I could specify that here. I can't remember what's in. Um, I haven't worked with this custom columns. I'm not sure what that does. So when I've entered that information, I can click on OK. 
And now I have that resource person entered, and you can see that's listed here in this resources column. Um, I can go on and continue to enter new resources that way, either clicking up here under resources and new resource, or I think another way I can add a new resource, let's try, um, I think when my mouse is here in the resource pane, let's see if this works, oh it does, I can right click over here and then select new resource and add a resource that way. So let's say John Smith, I can add his phone number, his mail address. Um, let's say he is the accountant and I could add his start date He's starting on the 17th, and he's hired through November 16th. And I can continue adding my resources. So that's how you add resources. Um, another thing you want to add is tasks. Um, so what are these resources going to do? What do you need done in this project? Okay, so in my pro project, we're purchasing and installing a new software and we're getting our staff people trained on that software. Um, so I want to get these tasks on the calendar. So I can add tasks by clicking up here on that menu, item, tasks, new task. And you see a task appear over on this left-hand side. And um, it says task zero, but I can actually change the name of this by clicking on that item. I'll call it task one. Purchase software. Um, I want to add more information about this task. So while my cursor is there on task one, I'm going to go up into the task menu and click on task properties. And that gives me this box in which I can enter much more information about the task. So I can give that task a name. I can give the task a begin date. On what date do I want to begin working on that task? Well, we're going to start that day one of the project. And I want to have that task finished very quickly, let's say by day four of that project, September 20th. Um, I want to place a high priority. We really need to get this done to get this project started. So I'm going to say this is of the highest priority. I can color code this task so that on my calendar I can recognize this task at a glance. So I can click on this color box and then give it a color. Since it's a highest priority, I'll give it a red color. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> and you could play around with this on your own. I haven't done a lot with this section. Um, I've just given it a color. You can even assign a shape to it if you want a pattern over that color. That's kind of fun. But I'll just leave it with the color for now. Is everybody with me so far? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, here, if you want to assign a resource to this task, who's going to do this task? Who's going to handle this one and take care of it? Um, you can click on the resources item. I'm going to say the project manager, Allison, is in charge of this, 100%. You could assign more than one person to this. Now I'm going to click on OK. So Allison is in charge of this. Now I, I see we're running. Names. Did I you get names? Did you get names? Huh. Whoa, we didn't get any names. Where she went to? Oh, I see. Where'd she go to? Oh, we found them. We found them. Okay, great. Oh, drop that list. Got it. Now I see it's 10 to our ITV is going to cut off at 7 o'clock. So I'm very quickly just going to add a couple more tasks so you can see what the calendar looks like once we get okay. some tasks added. So I went up and clicked on task, new okay. task. Then I'm going to go up and click on task properties. Task two, install software. And I'm going to say this is going to begin on September 21st, and we want to have this done within a week, by September 28th. This is going to be a high priority item. I'm going to, so on my calendar I can view it nice and clearly, I'm going to give this a blue color, and I'm going to put in charge of this John Smith. He's the accountant. I don't know why I'd put him in charge of it, but... I don't think we added the IT guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to add another task. Um, I want to get paid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Um, we'll say this is train staff on software. This is going to start Monday, October 1st, and we want this done by Monday, October 15th. Wow. You Everything's high priority. <laughs> um, you got a lot of training. This a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to give this a pretty purple color. And this one, Jerry, is going to be in charge of. Where's Jerry? Okay, so you can see here I've added, I've added some dates and some tasks. Um, now let's try to view this project on the calendar and see what's going on here. Um, I'm just going to slide it back. Very pretty. Okay, so I clicked on, you can see it here on week, week 38, which is um, week 38 of the year must be September 17th. So this is how that appears in the Gantt chart. Those color codings show where one task starts and ends. Um, here is how we see it on the resource. So you can see here's task one in red, here's task two in blue, here's task three in purple. On the resource chart, if I click there, Allison, um, you can see where her task begins and ends, John, where his task begins and ends, Jerry, where his task begins and ends. 
And then that PERT chart, which shows it kind of as boxes um, of information. The task name, the start and end date, and the duration of days. Something interesting, let's, um, where is that show critical path? That's probably back under Gantt chart. Some, oh, here it is. Sorry. Show critical path. There's an item right here. I clicked in there before. <laughs> Ooh, now I got fancy things going on. What did that do? Hey, look at the, I got that. When you learn in your project class what a critical path is, keep this item in mind. Show critical path um, and hide critical path. So I hope that this little preview has helped give you a little bit of an idea of what a project software can do to help organize and view tasks and resources, and the Gantt chart, the PERT chart. Are there any questions you have? Not that I can think of, because, I mean, we're just learning it, and I don't, I'm not using it, so until right. I start sticking stuff in there, it's like, I'm right. calling you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. We got and 40 colors on there. Uh, there's another tutorial back at the Gantt project software. Um, there's a tutorial right, where is it here? Um, anywhere, anyway, when you go to that Gantt homepage, there's a tutorial available there as well. Oh my. I got a little pink box that says something went wrong. <laughs> yes, that likes to appear every now and then. Um, here at that Gantt homepage is a tutorial for you. It's a gentleman with a British accent. I watched him several times to learn this software. Feel free to contact me. I'll try to help you as much as I can. Um, oh, here it is. Tutorial. Mark Portnell, it's on YouTube. There it is. Okay, there it is. But let's go here. Do you have anything? Oh, you don't. Okay, I'll get it. I got it. It's a nice tutorial. So, okay. Um, yeah. I'll give a little pitch for the Learning Commons. Remember, we're here for you. Thank you, Nancy, so much for being there to assist tonight. Yeah, what a great us help. The password. <laughs> Oh, see, now you have to throw me off. Um, if you ever want to contact right. oh, no. oh. the Can LRC on the WITC okay. web page, scroll okay. down, okay. click on the library link. Um, this is our home page. To find your LRC, click over here <laughs> on either library services or meet the staff hours. Each of the locations, each of the campuses is listed over here. I'm at Superior. Um, Robin's picture is soon to appear. You can email me or call me. Um, Nancy, what's the quickest way to find the ETC web page? Good Run question. Through the <laughs> Run okay. through the library. No. <laughs> okay. Usually I just, in the search bar, type ETC right. and then go there that way. Are. There you are! Hey, your picture's up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Not young, the other ones are. They're just kids. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for your patience tonight. In for more information, you can stop into the Education Technology Center on your campus.